Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing another Hackintosh build, but this time we're using the i7-8700K Coffee Lake processor. So here we go. So like I said, this machine is using an i7-8700K processor. I actually did a build video on this machine a few weeks ago, so I'll put a card up here and a link down in the description to that video and I'll also have a parts list if you want to check any of these parts out. So in addition to the 8700K processor, I'm also using 16 gigabytes of G-Skill Trident Z RAM and these were both installed on the Asus Tough Z370 Pro Gaming motherboard, a 256 gigabyte SSD drive and a GTX 1070 video card. So that GTX 1070 is actually one place that I had a little bit of a problem with this build. The reason for that was not with the card, but with the drivers available on the NVIDIA site. The latest web drivers actually slowed things down considerably. There was noticeable lag. It turns out some of the newer drivers don't work as well in High Sierra, and some of the old drivers work better. So after doing a little bit of research, I found a really good script. I'll put a link down in the description to this, but it's out on GitHub, and it's by a guy named Benjamin Dobell. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. But it's just a uh, script that you download, you run it from the terminal, and what it does is it goes out and finds the best NVIDIA drivers, not necessarily the newest, but the ones that work best on uh, the operating system you're on. I've used it on High Sierra, and it worked great. The drivers that it installed worked fantastic, no lag or anything. So other than that, I really didn't have too much of a problem at all with this build. Everything worked pretty much out of the box. The only thing I had to do was go into Clover Configurator after everything was installed and do some tweaking in there. If you have no idea what that means, I'll link down in the description to a article out on Tony Mac that lists you through step-by-step -step on how to get started, not necessarily for this build, but just for a build in general. And after reading that, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So jumping into the performance of this machine on day-to-day -day activities, as you would expect, this thing performed phenomenally well. Browsing the web, doing word processing, moving files around, all that stuff, completely smooth, no hiccups. No kernel panics, nothing. It's been rock solid. Now, I don't put a lot of credence into benchmarkings. I'm more of a uh, hands-on kind of guy, but I know a lot of people like benchmarking, so let's jump into that. So on Cinebench for OpenGL, we got 132.41 frames per second, and the CPU was 1416. On Geekbench for single core score, we got a 5905 and multi-core score was 25607, which is actually a really good score. Um, it's kind of right around what you would expect for this processor. Now, because of this GTX 1070 card, of course, I had to do some gaming benchmarks. I did just a few just to get an idea for how it performs. So first the thing I did was seven days to die at the highest setting. There was a minimum of 2.7 frames per second, an average of 74 frames per second, and a max of 117.2. Now, as you can see in this chart, that 2.7 minimum was just a quick dip down, uh, so you can kind of discount that. I never saw that during gameplay. Shadow of Mordor at 1080p ultra settings. There was a 42.8 minimum frame per second, a 96.9 max, and it was right around 69 frames per second with 68.9. Uh, totally smooth gameplay. Again, there was a little bit of fluctuation in there, but I never really saw too much of an issue. I never saw a drop or anything. It seemed pretty consistent while I was playing. So then I wanted to try a game that wasn't as graphic intensive and uh, RimWorld I had installed, so I tried that out. Solid 60 frames per second, no problem, as you would expect. Games like this can run on pretty much anything, so they're gonna run just fine on this system. So the other thing I do with my system a lot is video editing. So I wanted to test out both Premiere and Final Cut Pro. Now Final Cut Pro is one of the best optimized applications that I've ever used. The scrubbing and everything in there was completely smooth with 4K video right off my camera. I didn't have to do any proxies or anything. Smooth scrubbing, uh, cutting and moving clips around, no problem even putting in transitions, things like that, absolutely no problem at all. I did the Bruce X 5K benchmarking and it took 34 seconds to export that. And then I uh, had a nine minute video, it was a nine minute 4K video with a couple of uh, layers and you know basic transitions and stuff, nothing too fancy, exported that and that took about 20 minutes. Now that seems like it's a little bit high because one of the, the nice things of Final Cut Pro is the fast render times. Now the deal is Final Cut Pro is much more optimized to work well with AMD cards. So if I had an AMD card in there, I'd be getting much faster export speeds. 
Uh, it's a little bit slower with that GTX 1070, but it's still, uh, you know, it, it's not bad at all. 20 minutes to export uh, 4K video is not bad. Next up is Adobe Premiere. Now Adobe Premiere performed great on this as well. The scrubbing around the timeline wasn't quite as smooth as it was on Final Cut Pro, but again, I didn't have to make proxies and just by sending that uh, preview level down a little bit from full down to half or quarter, it sped things up. It was definitely workable. Uh, it, Definitely didn't have to take the time to, to generate the proxy files and stuff like that. And then with uh, multiple layers and transitions and color grading and some audio effects, uh, exporting a uh, nine minute 4K video to H.264 4K took about 15 minutes. So it was significantly faster on this machine uh, in Adobe Premiere just for the rendering than it was on Final Cut Pro. And again, if I had an AMD card in that, I am almost 100% sure that that render time would be much, much faster in Final Cut Pro. So overall, I've been really happy with this. High Sierra works fantastically well on this machine. I have a dual booting with Windows 10, so I switch between Windows 10 and High Sierra, and uh, they both work great on this computer. So if you're considering building a Hackintosh, this is a fantastic machine. This processor works awesome. The, the motherboard's great. I haven't had any problem with the RAM. I haven't tried to overclock it yet. This is just standard clocking but everything's worked great and I can really recommend all this stuff. The only thing that I would change if you're building this solely for a Hackintosh is you may want to consider, consider getting a AMD card rather than an Nvidia card. Just things are a little more optimized in Mac OS. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did and you haven't subscribed yet, please consider hitting that subscribe button, hit the like and comment below and come see me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Love meeting new people and chatting with them on there. And I will see you all in the next video. Thanks.